Here, let me get you guys. Here, Dad. Oh, good throw. <laughs> good catch, Maggie. Catch, Dad. Good boy, Amos. About what? About my birthday present. Although I was maybe going to Africa on a boat or going on a rocket to the moon. I'll tell you what. If you choose a book about Africa and a book about rockets, you might be able to have both. Cool. <laughs> Maggie, don't feed Amos at the table. He needs his energy, Mom. Amos made a girlfriend on our walk today. Wow. See, even old geezers can fall in love. Amos isn't a geezer. He's 91 in dog years. Dad, how old are you? Well, in uh, dog years, I'd be 257. It is old. That's a geezer. Hello. What's wrong? Is he worse? All right. Welcome to Raleigh, North Carolina, where the temperature is a balmy 87 and not a cloud in the sky. Hi, Mom. Got here as quickly as I could. Jimmy. How is he? <laughs> well, he's sleeping right now. How are you holding up? 42 years is a long time to be with someone. I know you, Mom. You'll make it. Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. 
I was just having the nicest dream. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. What was it about? You were fly casting, and I was reading something to you, you know. Walt Whitman, maybe, no, Emily Dickinson. The infamous medicine bag. The bag wasn't that bad. Well, you didn't have to explain it to your friends. Their dads brought guns on camping trips. My dad brought a bag of poetry. Didn't seem to do you much harm. Where is the old medicine bag anyway, Dad? It's up in the attic somewhere. You know, I was thinking I'd like to take the kids camping one day. Maybe I could borrow it. I wish I could go with you. That's a great idea. Jimmy, you and I both know I'm... We're gonna do it, huh, Dean? You know what, that is it. That, that's a plan. Since you're feeling better, we'll take them camping. Just you, me, and the kids, huh? Sure. Like old times. I used to play with him when I was a little boy at Grandma Emma's farm. <laughs> she loved these figures, but this was a favorite. The medicine man. <laughs> <laughs> Grandma Emma was sure proud of her Indian blood. Uh, runs in the family. Remember how you used to drag me to every burial mound you could find in search of your... Race, race of lost, lost warriors. Race of, that's it. <laughs> you know what Emma loved most about her tradition? Their attitude toward death. It held no terror for the Indian. He faced it with perfect calm. In fact, it was customary to carry him out of doors as the end approached, so that his spirit could pass under the open sky. Well, you'd be hoping for better weather than this. <laughs> Jimmy, it'll be fine in the morning.
James, do you have anything to say before we finish today? No. Meredith? <sighs> well, I guess what I want to say is... I know this is a hard time for you, James. But, um... I think... I think this marriage is over. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? No, uh, no, I don't. It's... <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, come on, Jimmy. Oh, come on, Meredith. Sure, we have our We've problems. We've been in counseling for over a year. Look, I just don't We're not think that we anywhere. need to take such drastic measures. James, I don't think you're hearing Meredith. What are you seeing somebody else? Is that what this is about? Of course not. Then why can't we work it out? Because we've tried again and again and So we again. try again, one more time. No, I can't. We can't. We don't make each other happy. Your daddy and I love each other very much. It's just that sometimes people who love each other can't always live together. Why can't it be fixed? Honey, sometimes things can't. I want dad to answer. You always told me things could be fixed. Sometimes grown-ups make mistakes, Muggs. This time, there are just too many things. And sometimes it's best just to move on. You really believe that? And this is why our national parks are in such deep trouble. Every year, with more and more devastating forest fires, endangered wildlife, and problems of overcrowding and pollution, the park's future is uncertain unless we all chip in to help. We always plan to go back to the wilderness. You and I. <laughs> While there was still some of it left. You could still go. To take Maggie. Teach her to fish like I taught you.
You're too stuck in your ways, Jimmy. You've got to look around. Get a new perspective. Good fishings. A little bit of heaven. Maggie, how'd you like to go camping? No, thanks. There was a river that Opti and I used to love to fish. I, I don't know how to fish. Well, I could teach you. We'll catch trout and we'll sleep under the stars. Just you and me. What do you say? What about Jack? Well, Jack and Mom could meet us later, at the end. I think a little time apart might be just what we need. And who knows, maybe, maybe things will be different. Maybe even better. Really? Sure. Why not? Is that a promise? Absolutely. Pinky promise? <laughs> Pinky promise. Blue for the seventeenth time. Oh God! I hope he doesn't plan some stupid sing along. Oh, well, that's it. Time to say goodbye, Mugs. Old Blue is raring to go. Oh, goodbye, honey. I love you. Love you too. I'm gonna miss you. Bye, Jack. See you, Rocket Man. We'll call every chance we get. Okay? Bye, you. Goodbye, you. Believe this, we're gonna sweat for the next three weeks. Open the window, honey. Breathe some fresh air. Dad, put on your seatbelt. You're not gonna nag me the whole way, are you? If I have to. When are we gonna get there? Where? Wherever we're going first. Kennebec River. Where's that? It's where I learned to fly fish. Be a little while yet, sweetheart. I've never seen so many cows. You look worried. That's because I am worried. About what? 
I'm worried about if your mom's gonna take Amos for walks or if she's gonna water the flowers. The ones you didn't tear up. You saw that, huh? Uh-huh. You worry too much. Well, that's my job, sweetheart. I'm unhappy too, you know. Dry fly casting is to fishing what free will is to any discussion of religion. Dad. The fun is in the damn difficulty. What fun? You see. People want easy answers, and that's God's joke on us, because you've got to work to catch fish. Here, hold this. Now, you want to move your arm like this, see? Fly fishing was invented for people who like challenges better than trout, right? Now, don't break your wrist. You keep it stiff. You... 1 o'clock, 11 o'clock. One o'clock, 11 o'clock, okay? You tried. I can't do it, I oh, can't. Yeah, sure you can. I can't. Just slow your arm down, stroke the air, recite some poetry. It helps with the rhythm. Grab a book out of the medicine bag and let loose. Maggie, come on, give it a try. You give it a try. I quit. Did you and Opti come here? Well, we only came here once, but I returned without him about 14 years ago with a pup called Amos. Really? Mm-hmm. Was Mom here too? No, I didn't know your mom back then. Were you seeing someone else? Well, matter of fact, I was. How'd you guess? Was she pretty? Well, I thought so. What happened? Didn't work out, honey. Let's have a good night song, huh? Fishing and whistling, whistling and fishing. Eat everything that they put on your dish. And when we get through, make a big wish that we never have to do this again. Again. I was in the army, but I never dug a trench. I used to push my knuckles on a monkey ranch. I'd go to town and drink. I'd give the girls a pinch, but I don't think they ever really noticed me. Father, forgive us for what we must do. You forgive us, Lord, and we'll forgive you. Yeah, we'll forgive each other till we both turn blue. And we're whistling and go fishing in heaven. Fishing and whistling, whistling and fishing. And eat everything that they put on your dish. And when we get through, make a big wish that we never have to do this again. Say hello, Amos. Hello. Hi. 
Why didn't you tell Maggie? She's too young. Why didn't you tell me? Dad, it isn't ex exactly easy to talk about, you know? She was your fiance, Jimmy. You loved her. Like I've never known you to love anyone. All you told your mother and me was uh, you broke up. Well, we did. In a way. Someone fired a gun in a restaurant. I wouldn't call that breaking up. Dad. You didn't even go to a funeral. Didn't want to say goodbye. I couldn't face it. You could have faced it with us beside you. You could have faced it with your family, Jimmy. Wanted to keep some part of her alive. Well, you succeeded in that, didn't you? Maggie! Maggie! Oh, hi. Uh... I'm Becky. I live down the road. James. I was out for a walk this morning. I ran into your daughter. She told me you were teaching her how to fish. Yeah. She's a natural. Oh, I baked you a homemade rhubarb pie. Thank you. For breakfast. Thought you might be hungry. I love rhubarb pie. My mom used to make it. I don't know what Maggie will say, though. It's not on the OAFL. OAFL? Official approved foods list. Oh, she said you're fishing away across the Northeast? Yeah, we're headed toward West Virginia. My parents took me down there when I was about five. Really? Yeah, it was the only big trip we ever really took as a family. We sure grow up fast. Yeah, we do. One of the great mysteries. Because there's this boy at school who stares at me a lot. When I talk to him, he just looks like he has to throw up. The classic throw up look, huh? And he's never spoken to you? 
He told me to shut up once, but I wasn't even talking to him. Oh, he's probably too short for you anyway, Mugs. I kind of like him, though. Oh, yeah? Huh. <clears throat> well? I don't think there's a future there. Hmm. How do you know when there is? Ah, uh, you, you just know. Did you know with Mom? Right away. Tell me how you met her. Oh, I told you that story, huh? Tell it to me again. Tell me about the pumpkin that looked like a chicken and the hay in her hair. Ah. <sighs> This one here looks just like a chicken. Now don't tell me it don't look like a chicken, because absolutely it does. <laughs> a Rhode Island red or an Andalusian blue? An Andalusian who? <laughs> well, I'm one of those English majors with a diploma from Harvard. Had no job, so I decided to try my living at journalism. Oh, such an easy living journalism. Well, it's a choice. My father comes from the old school where his daughter shouldn't have to make a living at all. You can't do what you really want to do, which was to be a solid gold dancer. Really? <laughs> well, I'd like to see that. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so what about you? I'm a freelance sports writer, but when I want to eat, I write about chicken-shaped pumpkins. <laughs> what kind of sports? Golf. Fishing, the gentleman sports. <laughs> I wish I'd written uh, Islands in the Stream, but unfortunately somebody beat me to it. That is so funny. I did my dissertation on Hemingway. Really? <gasps> oh, thanks. It's a beautiful fly you have there. Thanks. I don't think I've ever tied a fly quite that nice. Take after your grandfather. Why did you call him Opti? Short for Opti the Mystic, because he was always spouting Indian lore. Of course, he thought the name was a compliment. Opti Mystic. Uh -huh. Did I ever tell you about the first time you and he met? No. You were about three weeks old, and I walked into the nursery, and he was holding me in his arms, <laughs> and he was showing you a picture of a trout. Really? Yeah. Now, the funny thing was, you were looking at it. <laughs> Let's cast. I will make you brooches and toys for your delight. A bird song in morning, star shine at night. I will make a palace for you and me of green days in forest and blue days at sea. Why did you stop fishing? What do you mean? You haven't fished much since I've known you. Well, your mom doesn't like to fish, and <laughs> fishing alone's no fun. And we've always lived too far from Opti to see him more than a few times a year. Did that make you mad? No. Your mom and I are different in a lot of ways. And I guess that's... That's just part of being married. They say opposites attract. How are you and Mom different? Your mom and I come from different worlds. Neither one of us is quite comfortable in the other's world. Is that why you're getting a divorce? I don't know, sweetheart. Maybe. Hello? Hi.
beautiful weather, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Oh my gosh. Uh, 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 Maggie, put the camera down. <laughs> How you doing? Sorry. Dad, they're naked. Uh, I believe the correct term is buck naked. Do you see her boobies? They're huge. Uh, no, no, I didn't notice. We don't have to tell Mom about this. Uh, you know, I think there's a few secrets that you and I can keep on this trip, and maybe this will be one of them, okay? <laughs> We're getting married at City Hall. Honey, hand me my cufflinks. They're in the drawer. Just because your Southern Cracker friends won't mix with my Boston socialite crowd, why did we end up with a civil ceremony? Nothing civil about marriage. Just ask Hemingway. Who's this? Who? In the drawer. She's very pretty. Why do they call this place Indian Lake? Are there Indians here? Mm, not anymore. It used to be, though. Long time ago. It was a much different lake back then. Life was harsh for the Indian. Didn't have marshmallows. <laughs> you know, sometimes the winters were so bad and food was so scarce they had to eat bark off of trees. Really? <laughs> Definitely not OAFL, huh? No. <laughs> Did they believe in God? Well, they believed that God was all around them, in people and in places and even in events. Your great-grandmother believed that, too, and she taught it to Opti. She was Indian? Yeah, I never told you that. No. So we're Indian. Hmm, part of us is. Cool. Did you know her? No, she died a long time before I was born, Muggs. How? She killed herself, Muggs. Why? She must have been very sad, I guess. About what? Well, she never told anybody. You know? Sometimes we can learn things from sadness, and sometimes it destroys us. Are you sad? Yeah, I am. You won't kill yourself, will you? No. No, I won't. Can we call Mom? And Dad caught a fish when we also saw a lady swimming in the lake. <laughs> but she had all her clothes on. Oh, sounds like you're having a great time. Let me speak with your dad. OK, love you. I love you. Hi. Hi. 
Uh, how's uh, little Jack holding up? Oh, he's doing fine. We're headed to the aquarium on Tuesday. How about yourself? I miss you. Yeah. I miss you guys too. Hey, you'll never guess where we're going tomorrow. Every year, the Indians chose a beautiful girl to go over the falls in a canoe. The last girl was the daughter of a chief, and he was so sad at her death that he rode his canoe over the falls after her. Would you go after me if I went over the falls? Are you kidding? I'd be right behind you, Muggs. I'd go after you, too. Cinchy. Cinchy? What's that mean? I don't know, like, obvious. Oh, cinchy. It's a good word. Cinchy. <laughs> Excuse me? Can you take our picture? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Just uh, stand We're right there. It's great. You guys here on vacation? Honeymoon. Oh, I uh, came here on my honeymoon, too. That's, that's great. Uh, smile. Thanks. Come on, Muggs. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, so what do you want to do now? I don't know. You want to go fishing? Sure. Yeah. I like that they were married. Really? Yeah, I'd much rather marry my friend Tracy than that throw-up boy at school. Oh. Dad, why didn't you tell me you came here with Mom? Well, you know, parents don't really talk about their honeymoon with kids, you know? Kids think it's yucky. Did you like getting married? Absolutely. It was a, it was a wonderful day. You know, we had a big cake and... Amos ate five pieces. It rained all day, but the lady at City Hall said that that was a good omen. And you know what? She was right. Because we had you. Do you still love Mom? I'll always love your Mom, sweetheart. She's a wonderful woman. Can I hold your wedding ring? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Yet she never put me on the spot. Oh, ask me where I've been. She needed me, believed in me. You like never this music? Go rope and music. She never found me Why is it in most country music songs the men are leaving the women? And the women are glad to see them go. Well, that's what's known as the battle of the sexes. It's all part of being in love. You mean they like to fight each other? No. You know, it's funny, but... Often the things that attract people to one another in the beginning are the very things that lead to problems later. The trick is to find some area of common ground where you can compromise. You mean sex. What do you know about sex? It's what people do to have babies. It's very normal, Dad. Oh, I see. Ah. Forever. What's that mean? Oh, that's cinchy. It uh, means that I'm never going to get rid of that ring. She never found me. <sighs> Yet she never Okay? Uh-huh. Wait here. Wow. That was 
something. Are you okay? Do you believe in miracles? It depends. Pretty amazing that no one was hurt in that accident today. Well, I guess most of the miracles I've witnessed are pretty much on the small side. Like what? Catching a fish can sometimes be pretty miraculous. Ernest Hemingway once wrote about catching a fish, releasing it, back in the water and the fish just staying there beside him in the stream. And you know what he did? What? He put his hand in the water and he petted the fish. I mean, you want to talk about miracles. He really did that? Hmm? Might have been a metaphor, but... What's a metaphor? Well, it's something that stands for something else, like, like touching a fish is like touching nature, touching God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Whoa, hey, Mux. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. Wow, that must be a two-pounder, Mux. <laughs> He's huge. Oh, oh, oh. Let me get my line in. Keep your line taut. Keep the tip up, baby. I'm trying. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Mux. Get in easy. Just don't lose her. Oh, come here. Are we going to eat him? Well, what do you think? I think we should see if that guy Hemingway knew what he was talking about. All right. Wow. Amazing. Look at the red one. Look how beautifully they move in the water. How come? Because they're more at home in the water. They're happier there. Mom, look! Wow, do you think Gat and Maggie are catching fish like that? Let's hope not. Do you think these guys are happy? Who, the fish? They were brought here from the ocean, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think they feel trapped? Do you think that fish felt any pain when you caught it? Oh, absolutely. All living things feel pain, honey. But I'll tell you something. What? He was so happy to be set free, he won't even remember the pain. Can I get you anything else? Ah, uh, no, just the bill, thank you. Okay. Are you an Indian? Yes, I am. <laughs> My great-great-grandmother was an Indian. What tribe? Oh, Glala I thought you were going to say Cherokee. That's what everybody comes to you. has got a great grandmother was Cherokee. <laughs> You're from out west? We're from Maine. My great grandmother was from the west. She came east after Wounded Knee. Oh. What's Wounded Knee? It was a, it was a great battle. <laughs> what happened? Well, honey. There were many Indians killed. Why? Well, they wanted the land for themselves, but they had to weaken us to get it. So they killed buffalo until they're all gone. 50 million buffalo, can you imagine that? Then they took the children away from the parents and forbid them to speak their language or to sing their own songs or to pray in their own way. They wanted to get rid of the red and leave the man. That was the plan. 
Grandma Emma was one of those children? Was she there when they killed the people? Well, she survived, though her parents didn't. And she was sent east to live in somebody else's world. Maybe that's why she killed herself. Maybe. You know, I never thought of it that way. Grandma Emma come here? She went to school not too far from here. All this land, as far as the eye can see, belonged to the Indian, your ancestors. They didn't own the land because they didn't think that anybody could own land. But they lived here. Then the English came, took their land, forced them away from their homes under reservations. What's wrong, honey? I don't want you or Mom to send me away. Oh, Maggie, that's not gonna happen. Yes, it will. It's already happening. When we get back, Mom will be gone, and I won't have a home anymore. Oh, Max. I'll either live with you, or I'll live with her. And things will never be the same, ever again. Billy's father never takes him anywhere. Sometimes I feel like mom and dad. Hmm. My old man left when I was four. I had five kick-ass brothers who taught me to talk pretty tough, but inside I was totally lost. My father was just angry and drunk. Joke's on me. I grew up and married a man just like him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how about you, James? What was your daddy like? Hmm. He was a good dad. Spent a lot of time together when we were young, hiking, fishing. Is that why you're out here? Partly, I guess. My wife and I are splitting up. Uh, I thought maybe a trip would do Maggie some good. Damn, wish my old man was like you. No. Yeah. Feel like I'm letting her down, you know? You're not letting her down. She knows it, too. Any father who spends time like this with his daughter? is giving her a gift. She's probably just confused. Well, she's not the only one. I wish we could help you. Talking about it's good. Mm -hmm. And it's a hell of a lot easier talking about strangers than some stupid ass shrink. <laughs> yeah, I just think of us as your three muses. You got faith, hope, and tough talk. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Dad, I found bombs going in the back of my tongue. Really? And I learned how to swim. Wow, that's great. Hey, you're really growing up fast. Are we still going to say bye to Grandpa next week? Yeah, we're going to meet next Saturday, okay? 
Hey, is your mom there? She's uh, in the office packing. Hi. Hi. Uh, what's the pack in my office? Oh, I was just um, making copies of our financial records. I um, found a little house in town right by the school. So, how are things? Maggie's having a great time. Well, I'm hanging in there. Where are you? Silver Lake, West Virginia. And we're almost to the Potomac. <laughs> You're moving fast. <laughs> You're moving pretty fast, too, Meredith. I called to say I'm still trying to figure this out. Just look. It's going to be hard for a while. <laughs> That's an understatement. I'm sorry, James. This isn't easy for me either. I'm sorry, too. Do you still miss her? Who? Kristen. Why would you ask that? I found her picture in your office. Is that what this is about, Meredith? You live with too many ghosts, Jimmy. You've crowded me out. There's never been any room for me. Can I speak with Maggie, please? Is not marriage an open question when it is alleged from the beginning of the world that such as are in the institution wish to get out and such as are out wish to get in? Hmm? <laughs> well, that's terrific. <laughs> it doesn't apply to me. I'm in and I want to stay in. Well, it takes two to tango. And you've got three or four, including me. You know, that was smart, what Meredith said about too many ghosts. What are you doing, Jimmy? Why do you keep us hanging around? I don't want to be alone. You're not alone. You've got two beautiful children. You've got your mom. <laughs> We got Amos. Inside, Dad. Inside. I'm alone. I feel like I'm losing everything. I feel like I did when Kristen died. Only Meredith's still alive, and in some ways it's harder. You've got to forget Kristen. To face the truth for once in your life. You're a soon-to-be-divorced man who's stuck in the past. You say that like it's my fault. Well, it is, partly. And it's partly ours, and Meredith's. And it's partly nobody's. But we're past the stage of pointing fingers, Jimmy. You've got to take responsibility for what's to come.
welcome to Monongahela National Forest. Thanks. Where's the best place to camp? You don't have a reservation. No, I, I thought it was first come, first serve. Yeah, well, you're not exactly the first. Don't flush. Well, they're outdoor toilets, honey. They're not supposed to flush. These are the toilets like the first explorers used. Very possibly the same ones. Yeah, well, one of the explorers pooped on the seat. Yuck, you can smell it from out here. Honey, this was the last campsite. I, I don't know what you want from me. You're pitching the tin on an anthill. This is the worst. It can't get any worse. Hi, I'm Daryl. And this is Katie. We're your next door neighbors. We're from Wisconsin. That's my grandma. She's uh, the union boss in the sausage factory in Sheboygan. I'm going into fifth grade. I just took my hunter sage test back home. What's your name? Maggie. Hi, Maggie. This place sure smells like poop. Oh, and you got a... Hell of a lot of ants there, buddy. <laughs> I'm thirsty, mister. What would you like, a cold beer? Soda? Soda, please. My grandma drinks a lot of beer. She farts a lot, too. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Mugs, get our guests a couple of cold ones. Make yourselves at home. I liked how you poured boiling water on that ant hill. I'll have to try it sometime. <laughs> Not without adult supervision. I love marshmallows. We can't have them. Grandma says we can't stray far. Steel can't be trusted. <laughs> oh, now you tell me. Daryl, look at your marshmallow. Oh, cool, a meteorite. No, <laughs> Daryl! <laughs> that was an incredibly stupid thing to do. It's not having fun. Yeah, well, it's not Smokey the Bear's idea of fun. Jeez, no wonder your parents needed a break. My dad's on his honeymoon. My mom just died. Wow, well, I'm sorry to hear that. How long ago did she die? Three weeks. Well, that's awful. I saw her in the hospital on a Friday. She died on a Sunday. Katie didn't get to see her at all. Well, I'm really sorry to hear that, guys. I didn't want to come with my grandma. My dad made us. He said we'd get to roast marshmallows and see a wolf. My dad says you don't see wolves. They're really shy. You, you know, Maggie, I, I mean, Daryl, he might see a wolf. Probably not. Can we sleep here? You're more fun to be with than Grandma. Uh, hey, what are you doing up? I forgot to kiss you goodnight. Oh, oh good night, baby. Thanks for letting me sleep over. Well, thanks for the good night kiss. I sure needed it. Daryl said that. What? Nothing. Oh. You know, Muggs. My greatest fear when I was your age was losing my parents. It's scary, I know. Did it hurt you when Opti died? Very much. But you know what? I'm closer to him now than ever before. Just like Daryl's closer to his mom. You know? Monks, it's not gonna be that bad. 
You're worried. Well, that's my job, remember? Maybe you should get a different job. I love you. Get some sleep, okay? Okay. Good night. Good night. I love you all the way down to the lane, as far as the river, cried little nut brown hair. I love you across the river and over the hills, said big nut brown hair. That's very far, thought little nut brown hair. He was almost too sleepy to think anymore. Then he looked beyond the thorn bushes, out into the big dark night. Nothing could be farther than the sky. if I made a video. Dear God, I hope you're listening. I thought I'd write you a letter, but I didn't know where to send it. So I thought if I made a movie, you could watch it over and over whenever I was too tired to pray. Please, God, make it all better. We only have a few days left to go on this trip, and it's ending all wrong. Please help me get Dad and Mom back together, because if you don't, I don't know if I can believe in you anymore. So please listen to me. Your friend, Maggie. You know, Muggs, things don't always turn out the way we want them to. I know that you want your mom and I to get back together, honey. But you know, we don't always know what's best. God does. Sure he does. Then why won't he make things better? I don't know. But you know, God does things that, that we don't always understand. Why did he let this happen? He didn't have a choice, Maggie. Your mother and I are getting divorced, honey, and, and there's nothing that anybody can do to change that. But it's not your fault. And it's not God's fault. It's just the way things have to be right now. But I promise you, Okay? In spite of everything that's happening, your life is going to be okay. It's going to be terrific. You're just saying that. No, I'm not. You're just lying to me so I'll feel better. Honey, I don't lie to you. That's all you ever do. You said fishing would make things better. You said by the time we got here, things would be different. 
Well, Maggie, I, I hoped that they would. You made a promise and now you broke it. What promise? Your pinky promise. You made a pinky promise. Don't you remember? Oh, God. You swore to me once that you would never get a divorce. I asked you what divorce was and you told me and you said that that would never happen to us. Sweetheart, you were five or six years old. I don't care how old I was. You lied to me. I don't want to be like other kids in school. I don't want to have two beds and two houses and never know where I live. Sweetheart, I promise I'm going to make it up to you. I don't believe in your promises. I don't believe in you. I hate you worse than God. So sorry. Oh, baby. How much corn do you think I can eat in a minute? In a minute? <laughs> Not that many. Yeah, you want to bet? It's a bet. Okay. Say when. Go. Do you want to dance? Go ahead. Don't go near any open flames. Cut in. You excited about seeing your mom and your brother tomorrow? I can't wait. I'll bet. Oh, let's not forget, Grandma's coming, too. Boy, they're going to be so surprised at how you've grown. I didn't mean what I said about you being a liar, you know, and hating you. I know. Can I ask you a question? Well, I haven't stopped you yet, have I? Did you see that video? Yeah. I knew it. That's why I made it. I said it was a letter to God, but it was really to you. Well, you're a pretty smart kid, you know that? Dad, would you do me a favor? Sure. Would you write a letter to me? I know you write for magazines and stuff, but you never write for me. Well, what kind of letter are you thinking about? Like a, a written letter or a video one? Written. 
so I can carry it with me and look at it when I want to. Okay. Well, what should I write about? I don't know. Anything. Can I ask you one more question? Absolutely. Do you think you'll ever get married again? Well, maybe if the right person comes along. Okay. Dear Maggie, there is a time in every family's life. <sighs> Rat is black. More like dad's paralysis. You know, I have so much to say, but whenever I put it on paper, it all sounds so trite. You'll think of something. I'm leaving you now, Jimmy. I won't be coming back. I'm leaving you. Like Kristen did. And like others will, as long as you breathe. Because now you can stand on your own two feet. And I'll keep this close to me to remind me of you. I love you, son. I love you, Opti. I'm gonna miss you, Dad. I'm gonna miss you. I think there's a future there, though. Is your seatbelt on? Jimmy. Have you been here long? Mm -hmm. A few minutes. How are you? 
I miss your father. Sometimes I miss him so much I think I'm going to die. But then I look at Maggie and, you know, it's like he never left. She's a great kid. Yeah. You know, in all the hundreds of miles we traveled, she only once asked how long it was going to be till we got there. <laughs> Maybe because she already was where she wanted to be with you. Uh, you have to say that. You're my mother. <sighs> how are you, Jimmy? I'm great. I'm getting divorced, Mom. I know. Meredith told me last week. I'm not going to ask you why. It's nobody's business but your own. I wasn't really sure why myself. I kind of took this trip to figure that out. And did you? You know, this trip became kind of a pilgrimage. I mean, we went to places that were important to me, to, to Opti, to Grandma Emma. Met a lot of interesting people. And what did you find out? I found out that Meredith and I made two great kids, Mom. Mm -hmm. And then we never had a chance. Because I've been hiding from the truth with a, with a lot of ghosts. Because I was afraid to be alone. You might have told me that. Yeah, I might have, but you had to discover it for myself, I know. Yeah. I'm still a little worried about the kids, so how I'm gonna handle all this when I get back. Well, kids can be surprisingly resilient once they know that they're really loved. And that's for you. Well, I I'm not Opti. I'm not gonna tell you to read poetry or Indian stories. I'm just gonna tell you to really live your life, honey. Every minute of it. It's gonna be a hell of a lot harder than reading poetry. <laughs> was the trip? It was cool. We saw some horses, we saw some goats, and even an elephant. Wow, I think we should tell a park ranger. What do you think? Let's climb to get to the under the water. Hey, Grandma. Come on, boy. Hmm. Hey, you. Hey, you. So, so how was the catch, man? Well, it's good to see you. Thanks for coming. Well, we got something to do. Uh, we should get to it. You like the sign? <laughs> I love it. Do it, Muggs. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves, any mortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played at wrestling in a ring. We passed the fields of gazing grain. We passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a swelling of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the cornice but a mound. Since Dear May, centuries, but each I know that you're sad about the divorce. Your mom and I are sad too. The horses heads were 
But being with you these last few weeks has helped me laugh again and to figure out some things. That's what families do. Help each other laugh and solve problems that sometimes seem to have no solution. There's a story Opti told me of an Indian boy who was to climb a mountain. And before he climbed, his father told him that near the top, he would come to a great chasm that would frighten him. Jump, his father said. It's not as far as you think. Jump, my darling Maggie. I finally did. I promise you, you'll make it. Love.